before we go through this. So uh, um, uh, that's for the anything that I might add. And uh, let's uh, bring up the um, the project. So um, Majdef out later on, you could actually take take me through it, so I make sure there's no boo boos in there. I would really appreciate it. But anyways. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. If okay. I, if okay. if if I find anything else, I'll let you okay. know. Okay. So so um yeah um milestone three, uh with milestone three essentially uh you are creating uh, uh, uh three classes essentially. So uh, uh, two classes, uh, I product and item. So and perishable is going to be milestone four, uh, which is very simple. It's just an um, an additional thing that we are adding to item. So, yeah. So with uh, 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 I product is a f uh, 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 is an interface. So it ha doesn't have anything in it other than instructions how to make another um, uh, class out of it. Essentially, every single thing over here is a pure virtual method. And it explains exactly what they are. We have it over here. So we have uh, read SKU. But the, the reason we have this is not embedded inside the, the read. So read is actually happening in two stages. One is, is the SKU. And then it reads the rest of the thing. Because when you read the SKU, you have to make sure that the object doesn't, the, the record doesn't exist in a database. So first, we have to make get the SKU. If the SKU doesn't exist and it's the item is there and it's not there, then we uh, uh, continue the read. So this is stage one of reading and this is stage two of reading and they're both virtual methods as you see. Um, then we have uh, operator minus equal that reduces the quantity, operator plus equal that increases the quantity of the record. We have a double that tells us what is the cost of the product we have a boolean that returns if the state object that you have you will have in your uh, your class is in a good state or not uh, we already implemented the state the quantity needed is an attribute that's going to be added and it's the amount we need to have for this product to send it to the disastrous areas um, uh, quantity is uh, uh, the quantity that we have on hand uh, the, the thing that we have right now um, linear uh, tells us uh, how tells the display how it is supposed to display so if linear is set set to true before the display is called it is it displays the um, it displays the uh, the object uh, in a linear way so we can have a tabular output if linear is false, then it shows it as a form and everything is set. When linear is called, uh, the description of the item we have will be cut short and truncated. If it's longer than, I think, 35 characters. And um, if it is not, then everything is displayed. <coughs> uh, OF stream's job is to save the object into a file. And IF stream job is to load the uh, object from the from the uh, from the file uh, operator equal uh, with assignment checks uh, to see if uh, the SKUs are identical it's going to be used when you are inserting this into uh, inserting this into uh, the file so you have to go through every single thing make sure this the SKU is not repeated later on it's going to be used in the in the main application uh, and operator equal, it says it's equal, uh, but you will see that it is not going to actually return the uh, true if they are equal, but it returns if the description sent over here is found in the description of the item. So if the item contains that description, it returns true. And uh, <coughs> obviously, uh, as we mentioned, uh, um, I'm sure that all the audio profs mentioned, um, uh, you need to make sure that from now on all your destructors are virtual to make sure there is no uh, uh, dynamic um, um, the allocation problem in uh, future objects and that's essentially what it means also set up the destructor of iProduct to make 
sure the dynamic descendants of the I product interface will not have a memory leak if or when uh, going out of scope. So uh, this have to get fixed over here. Let me just open up my fixer as I'm doing this <laughs> so I can actually fix the problems that I see. Uh, pause. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, as I was saying, so let me mention that again because I was fixing that. So insertion extraction operator are uh, seen and see out overloads for the I product and they are overloaded over there to um, prevent. Uh, so you don't need to overload it for the descendants of the I product. And because I paused it, I repeated it. Uh, thank you very much, Armando. All right, so uh, uh, Zhu, uh, you said no, you're not okay with it. What, is there a question? Um, uh, sir, I think the linear function, the the letter L is uh, should be uh, local lowercase because in your I I protect test the CPP. Oh yes, uh, it, is, it is. Oh, is. thank you, thank you. Yes, this one is lowercase too. Let me check this use case. Make sure that we are in. So in the yeah. Uh, let me uh, check the project. Make sure that it is in fact you're absolutely right thank you very much linear linear no linear Zhu, are you my student yes i'm your mbb okay you got two percent for your uh, final thank you <laughs> Oh, welcome. Okay, so that's that. All right, so that's that. And so this has to get fixed over here too. Um, so, wow, this has to get fixed too. I th um, yeah. So let me fix this over here too. This linear is lowercase in here and also the delete of uh, of the main is gone now that's perfect okay so those are fixed all right so the item uh, module okay so uh, you gotta have uh, a few private uh, 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 private let me bring this over here okay so you gotta have a uh, few uh, private private attributes for your item and the private attributes for your item uh, essentially <coughs> are what we need for our product um, to keep track of how many items we need and how many items we have. So you're going to have a price, quantity, quantity needed. Uh, we're going to have a description that is dynamically allocated and we have no idea what the size is. It could be pages long or it could be only two, two characters. So it's crucial for us to know that this is not uh, you have to make sure when you're reading it from either a file or on the screen as a console entry, the, 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 the data entry is a variable read. It's not, uh, um, uh, we cannot set a temporary object, a, te a temporary array for it. There are many different ways of doing this. You can either use the uh, C++'s string object over here, but I strongly suggest if you are doing that, create a function inside utils that does that for you so you can use it for different things if you want to. Anyway, so that's that. Um, um, and uh, finally, uh, we have the linear uh, flag that is a Boolean that uh, uh, will be either set to true or false. And from there, the, the, the display is going to know if it's going to print uh, the, the object in Boolean or not. Uh, you have a couple of pr protected attributes. One is the status object. The reason it's protected is that we want uh, the children freely to set it to problem. If they, if they face, if you're, if they are in problem, they can actually set it to certain things. They, they can set uh, the error messages of the parent. So that's that. And uh, uh, another thing is the stock, stock keeping unit, the SKU, because the read of both needs to be able to set the SKU before uh, continuing with the read. So the SKU is uh, also uh, protected. Uh, we have a query for the linear uh, that is protected too, because the display of the child needs to know 
if it is supposed to finalize the the display of the parent in a linear way or not so that's going to be a protect uh, uh, protected too uh, constructor uh, sets all the app reuse zero null false so it puts everything to uh, its its own its uh, uh, default state uh, you have two ways of doing it either create a constructor that does that or go to the definition of the class and set everything to null and have an empty uh, uh, constructor in it so uh, an empty default constructor an empty default constructor can be written in two different ways So if you have a class, it's just in case you, you like to know, when you have a class, and, um, and I've never mentioned this in my class, in my own classes either. So I have a class, whatever the class foo, let's say. Okay, and in here I have int some attribute. Okay, so there are two ways of setting this attribute to a default value one is to actually create the con this const default constructor over here and set the m attribute sorry to initialize it it goes over here to set the m attribute to null to zero or whatever default value you want okay another way uh <coughs> sorry like this <coughs> like this or instead of doing this you can actually set it to null right over here okay and if it is a uh, 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 a pointer of kind m val whatever it is you do like that this is going to be set to null ptr okay so essentially it sets it to its default value automatically okay if you have something like this and the constructor is rendered unusable we don't need it if you have no constructor whatsoever then you can just leave it empty and don't do anything don't create a constructor because the the the, the system creates a default constructor for you but since we have rule of three set up for this one and we have a copy constructor then we are responsible for default constructor a default constructor that is empty can be either written like this so this is an empty default constructor so you can actually do it like this just create like that or you can say full default so these two so this is these two are ways to create uh, an empty so ways to create an empty default constructor is needed if needed all right so either this one or that one so this these are two different ways one you can do it like this or two you can do it like this so either of these two will work uh, are we okay with this So yeah, if you set up the attributes in your constru this, uh, default constructor, you do it that way. But if you are doing it over here, then either leave it empty or set it to default. When you say default, you are telling to the compiler, hey, compiler, you know th that I created the other constructors. I still want you to create the default. And that's what it does. So uh, going back. Implement the rule of three. There is no explanation over there. Um, so uh, you do this overrides for the I product quantity needed quantity double and boolean essentially returns the uh, these uh, uh, queries return the uh, corresponding attributes uh, uh, public modifiers of I product minus equal plus equal do the minus equal and plus equal to the quantity that's what it does um, and linear modifier sets the linear attribute to whatever value that is coming in very easy stuff to do uh, then you're gonna have a public modifier that is uh, uh, not uh, part of uh, I product and it's called clear okay so clear essentially wipes out the states and puts it back in a clear state so whenever the object goes in a in a, in a bad state 
you can r restart using it by clearing it and setting the clear to a good state which you know how it is that's in milestone two uh, so that's that uh, are we okay down to here So for uh, the IOs that we have uh, for saving the object, what you need to do is to first check to see if the state is good. If the state is not good, you just ignore it. You don't do anything. You just pass through it as if nothing happens. So when you are saving, if the state is not good, you simply go, I completely ignore. I don't care what's going on. I'm not going to print anything. You just return the, uh, the reference of the O stream and you're done okay but if the state is good it's not bad then what you do you print everything tab separated not comma separated tab separated so you put the you put the SKU um, you put the SKU you put the description you put the quantity you put the quantity needed uh, and then you make sure you put the price with two digits after the decimal point it is extremely important to do that not to have calculation problems when you're reading and writing and that's your save so for your load because load uh, lo um, essentially builds up your object it doesn't matter if it's in a good state or not what you do you, you clear the state which means uh, you uh, s uh, reset the state to a good state you uh, clear it and then after that you start getting uh, the information one by one so you get the SKU you ignore the tab you get uh, the string uh, dynamically hopefully you have written a function in the utils that does it for you so you don't have to keep writing it again and you stop at tab so you dynamically get the description um, you go up to tab and you uh, bypass the tab you get the quantity you ignore the tab you get the quantity needed you ignore the tab you uh, get the price you ignore the tab then if you check after doing all these things if your i stream is in a bad uh, is has failed during any of these then you set the state into a bad state saying input file stream failed uh, and then you return if stream without clearing it uh, because uh, we need if stream to remain in a failed state if the load fails are we okay with the load So unlike uh, saving, that when um, it is saving and uh, uh, unlike in saving, when it's saving, it, it, it doesn't do anything if it's in a bad state. The display, if it's in a bad state, is going to display the state. And because state shows its own state, then we're going to see what the error message is. So your state will keep the error. Uh, and the display if it's in a bad state it's going to show that one if it's in a good state then it checks am I linear if it's linear this is how it prints it's obvious you can see exactly what this the the, uh, the format for it for it is and uh, you got to make sure that you cut it short if it is so this uh, um, you have to uh, print it character by character until you get to the 35 characters if it is more than uh, the length uh, and uh, yeah so but make sure that you do that when you do this you don't change the data because some people to do that they actually shorten that the data by mistake don't do that make sure that you only print you only uh, truncate it while printing uh, the best way is just to uh, in a loop print character by character um, yeah so if the description is too long of that one again no new line is printed after but if it is a descriptive format which essentially you have to show everything what happens is that you first mention AMA item then you put the SKU with a column in front of it and then uh, the description you print the the whole description if it's 900 characters you put the 900 characters out 
it doesn't matter it's going to wrap through the screen and go through it there's no problem then you show the uh, quality needed with no formatting availability but price again with two digits after the decimal point and uh, uh, needed purchase fund is actually uh, the unit price multiplied by uh, the um, uh, needed amount minus availability so the amount that is missing multiply by unit price and it's going to tell you how much money you need to buy the rest and this is an example for it okay so we need 200 uh, sleeping bags we have 100 it's 65 dollars and 66 cents therefore we need six thousand five hundred sixty six dollars to get the extra hundred and make it ready for shipping so uh, read SKU uh, 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 again as I mentioned read SKU and read they work in two stages uh, first of all uh, any uh, questions about display are we good with display are we okay with the display all right uh, read SKU and read so it happens again reading happens in two stages read SKU reads the SKU from the screen with the prompt SKU so it actually shows SKU and make sure that the number begins uh, with uh, digits 4 to 9 um, uh, later on you'll know you'll you'll find out that all the SKUs for perishable items their SKU starts from zero, uh, 1 to 3 and all the uh, non-perishable items SKU starts from with n 4 to 9 so um, it's very simple and straightforward just make sure that the value is between uh, 40,000 and 99,000 99, 99, you know 99,999 uh, and that guarantees that the first digit is actually indeed between 4 and 9 uh, yeah, so you do that, and then after doing that, uh, then you uh, then you read. Uh, so uh, you read the rest. So uh, um, you have to make sure that uh, uh, the range is correct based on the entry, and an AMA will not accept any item that is uh, below this or above that. And when we go to perishable AMA item, then it's going to be between 10,000 and uh, 39,999. And that's how the read works for the SKU. And then for uh, reading the, the rest of the item, first you display these two. So you show AMA item and then you show what the SKU of the item that they are entering is. And then they're going to fill the rest of the information and hit enter on all of them and uh, enter the information everything is uh, foolproof okay every single thing entered over here is foolproof you got to make sure uh, uh, that you go through that um, and um, I should have added over here something that I did not now I remember that I should have asked you to make sure there are no tab characters inside this but it doesn't matter doesn't matter let it be it's gonna fail in reading anyway so that's that um, uh, and that's how it's read so a description unknown length of characters uh, uh, quantity uh, up to 9999 quantity on hand between 0 and that value so if quantity needed is 200 this is between 0 and 200 if quantity needed is 5 this is between sorry between uh, zero and five that's what it's going to be uh, and the double price is uh, uh, more than the it goes from zero up to nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars and if any of these things fail um, uh, obviously what you're going to do uh, is to set the state to the uh, proper message so yeah which um, should be very unlikely quite frankly so we are saying if i stream fails during reading set the state to console entry fail <coughs> that is highly unlikely because everything is foolproof um, but you never know so this error message you might never see uh, but uh, um, it's good to have it you never know maybe something goes wrong other than uh, human entering something wrong anyways that's that and that's uh, uh reading all the items uh, any questions
Go ahead, Albert. Albert, you had a question? Sorry, I, I accidentally oh, that's pressed okay. something. Right. Yeah. That, that. All right. It's absolutely clear. All right. Goody, goody. Okay, so that's that. And the tester program, you know exactly what it is. Uh, I just put these things to make sure everything's foolproof. And the reason that you need to submit every single milestone for your project to be acceptable is all these proofreading. So if you pass this, then I'm not going to test these proofreading in a last one. In the last one, I'm just going to give you good information to enter. Because you already passed milestone three, it means your data entry is foolproof. I don't need to test it uh, for the end. So uh, like this, your submission won't become too difficult at the end. You have very short amount of uh, testing to go through. Uh, tester program is there. And I guess that's it. So uh, any questions, anything you want me to talk about on Milestone 3? Any questions? Anyone? Joe? Uh, hi, yes. Professor. Hello. Can I ask a question about the workshop, like workshop 9 and 10? Yes, but uh, you gotta wait for for, for when of course, everybody of says course, no. Yeah. We're gonna stop recording them. We'll do that. Oh, I don't want okay. this to go to okay. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, but hold on. Yes, of course you can. But hold on. Okay, thank you. No problem. Anyone? Joe, go ahead. You said you have a question. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have a question. It's about uh, because we know the function surface load is uh, get the information from the file stream, uh, but uh, in the uh, I product uh, uh, we only have the help function um, operator with the uh, with the regular stream. So. Uh, with regular stream uh, for the insert and uh, uh, and uh, outsert, should we uh, add uh, to a function uh, about the file stream, or we just uh, can overload the uh, the operator insert? No, no, you and, just do uh, it because uh, those are for console entry. We are not going to use those things for the for for file input and output. So in my design, sometimes people, yeah, mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. Sometimes when the read and write from the file and the console are very similar, mm -hmm. then they they use one operator overload for everything. So we don't even have a save and this save and load. Uh, but because we are not using uh, the we are not uh, because uh, in my design uh, I am not uh, uh, what shall we call it. Uh, uh, I'm directly calling the save and load and not operator overload for this. Uh, you don't need to create anything for IFS stream and OF stream. It's only I stream and O stream. Did I answer the question? So we don't need to uh, uh, create uh, uh, any two more the operate, no, uh, the you operator. No, only have one only have insertion this. operator for O stream and one insertion operator for I stream and you leave save and load as oh, they are. Okay, I know it. Thank you. All right. Okay. No. Uh, any other question? All right. Um I don't have a question about MS3. Oh. Um however I, I um there's a typo in workshop eight if, okay. if you want me to workshop tell you eight? Okay, so let yeah. me so let me just stop this then. Uh, so okay. I hope it's not too late because it's due tomorrow. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, let me just uh, stop the recording. Okay. So that.